Hello everyone, you know the drill, Per Cat Cafe Q&A, questions coming from Patreon. Shauna Lee asks, Per Cat Cafe seems like such a very local thing to the Boston area. How did you first hear about it and decide it was DTRH worthy? Suggestion. It was a suggestion. I think I got one person suggesting it, and when she suggested it, um, it was still ongoing, it was still developing. And so I was like, you know what? Uh, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna keep my eye on it because this is like endlessly fascinating to me. Um, and sure enough, when I needed a new topic and the Grover House fell through, I'm like, hey, Per Cat Cafe's done. It's something that I've already done a lot of the research on and I'm a bit behind because the Grover House fell through. Let's do it. What made it DTRH worthy was, um, Diane's strange interactions with everyone and how, like, if you look at a little piece of it, it's very, very strange. But if you look at it in its entirety, it tells this really odd and sort of surreal story and you can watch in real time as this business collapses around her um, and she's at the very center of it. Um, but I thought it was especially interesting because all of this, a lot of this at least, happens on Facebook, which is a part of the online sphere that I think um, I haven't explored very much and I think most people, for good reason, are not terribly interested in. Uh, and I, th I thought that this was a really odd example of um, something different coming out of it. Madeline Swan asks, Do you know if there are other businesses she's ever tried to get going, or is that the only one? I have no evidence to suggest that she has ever had another business beyond the Per Cat Cafe, and in fact, I would say that the failure, the spectacular failure of the Per Cat Cafe um, is evidence that she's never had another profitable business. My suspicion is that she inherited a large sum of money. One of the figures I saw thrown around, I didn't uh, include any of this in the video itself, but one of the figures I saw was $700,000. I saw a few different numbers. Um, but she pumped all of that money into the Per Cat Cafe. It all just sunk into it. Um, and then as soon as she was out of money, she had nothing she could fall back on. Um, that's my suspicion. Freddie Van Zant asks, I'm mostly concerned about the cats that were at the cafe. You're not the only one. Is there any clue of what may have happened to them after its closure? Um, all of the cats that have belonged to the Bay State Animal Cooperative were taken out as they um, left. Obviously, they, they took their cats back, um, but all of the cats that remained appear to have been adopted by Diane Kelly, and it's more than likely that um, they are either still in her care or she passed them off to someone else, um, but I have no evidence to show one way or another what happened to them. Josh Strife asks, Judging from her writing style and her Facebook tirades, do you think her book will be of critical acclaim, or will it be another Empress Teresa and be read with scathing criticism on your next live reading? <laughs> um, it's never gonna happen. It's never gonna be released. Um, Diane tell- like, she- she talks some big talk, but when it comes to actually doing things, she's not very good at it. Um, so, the perfect claw is never happening. Lewis Young asks, how do you manage to read the meow meow purr lines without immediately cracking up? <laughs> that actually was a little bit tricky. Um, at this point, I'm pretty good at reading ridiculous things uh, straight-faced pretty easily. I kind of just go into an almost meditative trance when I'm reading some of these long passages like this. Um, but this gave me more of a run for my money than most. It. It took me a few tries at first. Um, I, I had to practice it a few times to get just the right cadence that I was going for, but as soon as I got it, I locked on and could do it just right every time. Jacob Reed asks, Did you attempt to directly contact any of the individuals involved for further information or clarification, or was it deemed unnecessary since most all of this occurred over very easily accessible social media pages? I have a general rule of not contacting the people involved because I'm more interested in reporting on the way that uh, people discovered it. Um, rather than um, taking a more investigative journalist approach, um, I prefer to tell the story of how people discovered this and how they experienced it. My goal is to basically put you in the shoes of someone who is learning about this as it is happening. Um, so. 
No, it, but that's more a convention of down the rabbit hole than anything else. If I were to make a different series, if I were to be, um, if I were to try to be more journalistic with it, then I would reconsider that po uh, that policy, obviously. But for down the rabbit hole, that's just the way that I prefer to um, to structure it. Wolf Blue asks. I feel so bad for not having a question for the Hurdy Gurdy, Temple OS, and Jordy Jordan episodes, and I really have no good questions for this episode except, what the hell was Diane thinking? She wasn't. I really don't think she was thinking about anything at all. I think she was thinking, I like cats, cat cafes seem cool, let's make it happen. Um, and she didn't do a whole lot of research beforehand, uh, she just threw herself right into it. Um, but when doing something as complicated as setting up a business, often it is worthwhile to, um, while it is important to just throw yourself in and do it to a certain extent, you also probably want to be a bit more measured. But um, I suspect, I mentioned earlier, I suspect that Diane came into a lot of money and I also suspect that that money often cushioned her from her uh, bad decisions. And um, this time, it just didn't work because she ran out of money. Zephronius asks, Since your video aired, the Per Cat Cafe Facebook has closed. The owner went on a rampage against someone named Turtle Boy and then shut it down. Typically, the subjects of your video are either still kicking years after the fact, such as DSP, or were defunct long before your documentation of them. Does knowing a recent subject imploded shortly after your videos change your feeling about your work? Would you have done the video differently or sat on it a little longer? I was a little bit worried about what might happen with the airing of my video. Um, I certainly wasn't expecting it to do as well as it did, and I was monitoring the situation after the video aired. But from what I could tell, um, my video did not have much of an impact on her. There were like a few dozen people that went onto the business's Facebook page and typed in like, we have no cats, Kathleen, um, and then left. But nobody really seemed to have stuck around. I didn't exactly swell um, the anti per cat cafe uh, ranks, um, mostly because I think the business is dead. As for um, her behavior, her behavior that she exhibited after my video released is pretty consistent with her behavior before my video released. Um, nothing she was really doing was um, off track for the way she was headed. Um, and the Facebook page did close down, and like I said, I have been monitoring the situation. It was forcibly shut down by Facebook um, due to um, Diane speaking some like really homophobic comments and slurs and um, the page was taken down for hate speech. As for um, what I do differently, while, again, I am confident that I didn't have much of an impact, if at all, obviously, no, I'm speaking pretty haltingly here because I'm trying to find the right words for this. I want to be precise with how I'm explaining this. Um, I do feel like I'm getting a bit close to the line here, and so I think I'm going to pull back and be a little bit more careful in the future. Because while it was okay this time, I am a little bit uncomfortable with um, how close it got to maybe having a significant impact, and so um, I'm going to be more careful in the future. Tim Neal asks, Regardless of the owner's incompetence in this instance, what do you think of the broad concept of cat cafes as an enterprise? There was one in my city that was very popular for a time before it shut down due to increasing business rates. Keep up the great work. I'll... I'll try. <laughs> uh, they're okay. I feel like having food at a cat cafe is a really great way to get a ton of cat hair in your food, but for something like coffee, it seems okay. It certainly um, fills a niche. I, I think that it's really useful for, for people that, you know, maybe they're in a position where they are used to having a pet, but they can't have a pet. Um, and it sort of fills that need, at least for a little while. Um, I know that college students really um, enjoy them a lot of the time because they're usually in a position where they can't have a pet, or at least, you know, they can't care for one properly. And so cat cafes sort of fill that need. Irvin asks, be honest, how long did you work on perfecting the meow meow purr line? And I spent about five minutes trying things out and playing them back. So, maybe a little longer than I should have. Ariadne McGillivray asks, 
Does she continue to post on Facebook? What's her life? Um, we don't know, frankly. Um, we can make guesses. We know a little bit. Um, her business page is shut down, but she's still posting on the few uh, public forums she has left. Um, and they are very confrontational. She is starting to target and trying to dox certain people that spoke out against the Per Cat Cafe and her treatment of cats. Um, and she's extremely bitter. And it's very obvious that she is dipping heavy into drink. Um, but that's all we know for now. Melanie Katz asks, and that's a very relevant name, I was very concerned to hear that a cat died of medical neglect at Per Cat Cafe. Have any charges ever been made against Cyan in response? Um, so let me fill in a few gaps here. After the family got the cat back um, and they took it to the vet, the vet recommended they put it down and they did put it down. They approached the M uh, MSPCA uh, to get an investigation going on Diane and they did do an investigation. Uh, however, they found that Diane was not at fault because um, what was uh, causing the cat's decline in health was a growth inside of it and there was no way that the growth could have been caused by anything that Diane did so quickly. Um, and so therefore it was determined that Diane uh, was not at fault for the cat's death. Um, and I, I, even if she's not responsible, there's an argument to be made that, oh, like if she had taken the cat into the vet immediately, then it might've been okay. But it seems unlikely to me that she had the money to do so. And so instead she just got really angry at the person who gave her the cat who, um, stated that the cat was uh, seemed to be in perfect health and they gave it over to her. They claimed they had no intention of, you know, dumping a sick cat onto someone else. Um, so, to an the, I'm, I know I'm filling in a few more details here, here but to answer your question, um, no. An investigation was performed and they found Diane was not at fault. Stu Wycliffe asks, I initially saw Diane as just greedy and manipulative. However, the references to her possible alcoholism have actually made me reconsider my position a little. Which side do you find yourself in? Do you think Diane had an inherently exploitative and careless personality, or was she genuinely passionate about the cafe, but disturbed and therefore easily provoked from criticism? I think that more than anything, Diane is confused. She did not seem to understand at any point why people were so frustrated with her. She, like, you remember, um, she posted the, um, uh, Kathleen Krucek's video of, um, her sharing her pet play fetish gear, and then the same day, or, like, it almost, like, very shortly afterward asks, why are people being so angry against us? We're just trying to help cats. Um, she just did not understand, um, and it could be due to any number of factors. I mean, we could speculate all day and come up with reasons why it might be one way or the other. Um, but at its core, she just doesn't get what's going on. And even now, I think she doesn't understand what's happened to her. And she's latched on to um, people that she's seen as enemies because um, having a cafe that is failing is a lot more um, nebulous than an, a person who is coming after you. Uh, a person who is coming after you is an enemy and you can attack an enemy. Um, and so I think she's just latching on to whatever she can find at this point. Lydia Collinson asks, based on the experience you had making and researching this video, what would be your biggest piece of advice for new businesses looking to attract customers? If you don't know how to do it, hire someone to do it. If you can't find someone to do it or you don't have the money to hire someone to do it, then just don't do it. One of the maddening things about the, the social media situation for the Per Cat Cafe is they didn't need social media. They had local news reporting on their cafe and giving them tons of free publicity. They did not need an active Facebook page, but Diane insisted on it and it ended up being the business's downfall. So. She didn't know how to make it work, and everyone who she got to do it abandoned her in the end because it was such an absurd situation and she was such an absurd manager. And instead of just dropping it, she just kept going with it. I don't think she, as I was mentioning earlier, I don't think she was thinking about any part of this process very deeply. And this sort of applies to anything. Um, the way it applies to what I do is 
People like down the rabbit hole because I'm not overextending myself. Anything that I can't do myself, I get someone else to do, and I just stick to what I know I can do. And I would recommend anyone who's trying to strike out on their own like that, keep that in mind. Elvis Delaney asks, As amusing as the video is, it touches on some darker topics, like the owner's apparent alcoholism, suicidal tendencies, and mental health issues. Did you purposefully leave more of these details out to keep a more comedic tone, or was there simply not enough of that darker material to go on? Not accusing you of lying or anything, but I feel like Diane has a much more serious story to tell. Um, you hit it on the nose. There's real. There was not a lot of information about um, the darker side of Diane Kelly. We really just get those hints. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I really try to show these topics the way that someone um, on the outside would find it. You know, I, I want to put people in the shoes of someone discovering this and following it as it's going on. And the experience of the Per Cat Cafe really was. Oh my god, these cats are in trouble. Ha ha, Diane's pretty funny. Oh my god, wait a minute, she's suicidal and alcoholic. And I, I did want to accentuate it a little bit, and I figured the best way to do so would be similar to the way that I approached Time Cube through um, ju juxtaposition. Um, and it worked well for Time Cube. I think that the Per Cat Cafe was in general more comedic, but by the end, I wanted to suggest, hey, they're really are mental problems with this person and you were laughing at it and i'm like my personal stance um i think i've made like I, i've hinted at here and there um but i do want people to consider um what is happening online a little bit more it's okay to laugh but it's also worthwhile to consider what is going on deeper Avon Gale asks, Do you ever hear from people who are featured in your videos, either in a positive or negative way, or find out if they've watched them? You do such a good job of remaining unbiased in your presentations, I'm curious to know if the subjects, many of whom seem a bit volatile, either try to ever try to engage with you and how you might handle that. Um, my, uh, calling my videos unbiased probably isn't the proper term. Any sort of media is going to be biased to a certain extent. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but my general goal with my videos is um, to tell a story and definitely have a narrative through line and suggest things one way or another with the narration and with the scripting, but um, I also have the goal of pre presenting enough information that you can draw a completely different conclusion uh, to what I am suggesting in my script. And oftentimes my comment sections are littered with, like, I'm not sure what to think here, and or like something that is diametrically opposed to my opinion, like they came away from the video with an opinion very different from my own. Um, and that generally signals to me that I do a good job. Um, but to get on to your actual question, um, occasionally I hear that subjects have watched my videos, but generally, because my videos have such a lack of impact, because there isn't much of an impact on the subjects that I cover, um, they tend to just kind of mention me offhand or not really engage terribly much. The obvious exception is Jeff Mendocino from Game Life, but that was more um, out of necessity than anything, and we, we stay in contact, we chat every so often, and he's a really cool guy. Kas Osa asks, or maybe Asa, what do you think of the criticism levied at animal cafes in general? Cat cafes are the most common and usually the most ethical, but in Japan I've seen everything from snakes to owls and penguins being kept as entertainment in captivities that are severely under par for those animals. Do you think the conversation around that affected Purr at all, or were the problems with Purr exclusive to their business practices? I do not know that much about animal cafes. My gut instinct is to say um, a lot of the animals that you listed um, are not used to human contact or are solitary, like owls. Um, I can't imag imagine an owl cafe being a terribly ethical thing. But as for how it, uh, that discourse affected the per cat cafe, people in America just don't know what the hell an animal cafe is. They, it's a completely novel concept here, and a lot of cities are like, sometimes you know they'll deny permits for it. They like they don't really understand what it is. Um, so I don't think it really affected it that much. I'm pretty sure that all of the bad business that happened came from Diane herself and the discourse that she sparked. 
Christopher Flagg asks, is she still trying to open the cafe or has she expressed any future plans for any other business endeavors? Um, it's dead. Her cat cafe is completely dead. Um, as far as I'm aware, Diane Kelly is insolvent. Um, she's out of money. She was paying for the Per Cat Cafe out of her own pocket, as far as I understand it. And, um, that tank is empty. Um, I, I, I don't think she's going to be trying to open any other business for a very, very long time, if ever. Evan asks, I realize after watching this video that I live an eight minute walk from this place. When I moved into this neighborhood, I think it was already shut down. Wow, that is terrifying. I took this story to be a parable of a person who does not have the ability to execute her ambition, but thinks she does. I have a fear of having a revelation like this, that something I thought I sought out to do ended up causing damage that I was not aware of until later, so much later that you can't atone for it. Do these stories ever bring out in you a fear or a new perspective on your life? I'll, I'll say this, the fact that you're even considering it um, is a good sign that it's unlikely that you are to do something like that. Just keep that self-awareness, but don't let it paralyze you. As for myself, I know a lot of people are worried about me because I dig so deep into some of these, frankly, like dark and depressing topics. But um, I would argue that Down the Rabbit Hole has been a very positive and very wholesome experience for me because um, whenever I'm digging into a topic, um, oftentimes it offers me an opportunity for self-reflection. A really great example of this is Chris Chan. I know that's one of my oldest videos, but it's such a great illustrative example. Uh, when I first discovered Chris Chan, the initial interest was sort of like a voyeuristic tendency of, oh my God, this person's weird, what's going on? Um, but what kept me coming back to learn more was um, the ways that my life, especially my early childhood, paralleled Chris's in some ways, obviously not to such an extreme. I was certainly bullied in um, elementary school, but not near, um, maybe not near to the degree that Chris experienced when he was like in you know, elementary, middle, high school. Um, and we, uh, we shared a lot of tendencies. Like I constantly was trying to do things that I thought were cool. I was trying to look cool. And Chris very much had and has an obsession with this. Um, these are just examples, but basically Chris acted as a mirror for me to examine myself and in many ways the topics that I cover um, help make me more self-aware. Um, this is th this has been true, for example, for Wings of Redemption. We are very different in very many ways, but I also see like, oh, if I don't handle my career correctly and I don't approach it correctly, this is what I could become. Um, and don't worry, I, I adore down the rabbit hole. I'm, I'm obviously speaking about working on it in very positive terms. <laughs> and, and, um, God, I, I love my job and I, I get very excited about, uh, working on a new video every time I start up. Um, but yeah, it's, it, there certainly is a level of fear, um, but all in all, it's very positive and it does allow me to reflect on myself in new ways. Patrick Brown asks, who exactly was Turtle Boy? I went onto the group's Facebook page after watching the video and saw some pretty disturbing messages from Diane to someone named Turtle Boy. Your video had some screenshots from them at the end as well. I can't check the Facebook group now it seems, Google turns up nothing, and the Per Cat Cafe website has a link to the Facebook group that is broken. Uh, Turtle Boy is a publication that is local to Boston that tends to cover strange occurrences there and strange people and went, um, in a very derisive and aggressive tone. And when they discovered um, Diane and the Per Cat Cafe, they latched on really hard um, and started making a lot of um, articles about them. And they were making articles sort of updating it on it. Um, most of the information on the Per Cat Cafe is chronicled in a single uh, Imgur album, and that is what they drew from uh, for the vast majority of the time. Eventually, Diane started responding to them, and so uh, Turtle Boy started poking and prodding more and, well, for lack of a better term, milking the lol cow. She did eventually threaten to sue them. Steve Doombald asks, between Terry, Jordy, and now Diane, you keep talking about these people who have these delusions of grandeur that end up blowing up in their faces. Do you ever feel like bringing more attention to these people and their problems may be rubbing more salt into their wounds? By the time I made the Temple OS video, Terry had been dead for half a year. Um, I chatted with Jordy and he said that my video was fair and um, Diane's business was dead by the time that I made my video. Um, 
and I was pretty sure that Diane wouldn't really be that aware of my video anyway. And given um, how little she's talked about my video afterward and the way she sort of minimized my video compared to other things she's talked about, um, it makes me think that she isn't super worried about it anyways. This is something that I always keep in mind, what kind of impact am I going to have on my subjects, and I try to do it in such a way, um, and I try to be strategic about it in a way that I will have as little impact on the subject I'm covering as possible. This is obviously easier when, you know, the subject is dead or the incident is finished and, um, like, the subject isn't online anymore or, like, my video won't reach them in any possible way. Um, but for those that it could potentially impact, I try to set things up in a way where it will have minimal impact without, um, without omitting any important details. It's a very delicate line to balance. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, I think I maybe got a little bit too close to, um, to overstepping that line um, with the Per Cat Cafe video. And I, I think I'm going to be a little more careful, careful from now on, even if it was okay this time. Don Theodoro de Carvajal asks, I think this down the rabbit hole has shown eminently that while anyone can have an idea, if their personality flaws hinder progress, the idea will often be scuppered from the start. That being the case, people like Diane may have a very hard time managing their personality. As such, is it not right that we should view these people with pity rather than hate? I don't feel that it's my place to dictate how someone feels about a subject. Um, while I certainly will take certain angles in videos for certain lengths of time, like, oh, this person, like, did disgusting things, oh, but then there's this other angle, uh, my goal isn't to tell you, um, what to think, uh, my goal is to present you with as many angles as possible, um, so that you can make your own decision and hopefully recognize that often uh, these situations are perhaps a little bit more complicated than um, they are on, than they seem on the surface. Korat McRed asks, Compared to your other subjects of Down the Rabbit Hole, for example Wings, Terry and Temple OS, Empress Teresa, was this comparatively more difficult or interesting to research or would you say it's on the same level? Uh, this topic was very easy to research, and I'd say in some ways a little bit boring because all of the information was really nicely collated and centralized, and um, that made it very easy and fast. That's one of the reasons that I decided uh, to do the Per Cat Cafe. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I was planning on doing the Grover House, but so much information was gone that it didn't feel right to make it down the rabbit hole on it. Um, and I knew that um, I, I had already done a lot of the research and I knew that it was all nicely collated and centralized. Um, so I, I could do it very quickly and I did have to get it done quickly because um, I had a hard deadline to get the video out. Um, I knew it would be quick to research. So um, easy, very easy comparatively. Talons of Ice and Fire asks, How did you stumble across Per Cat Cafe in the first place? Since compared to Time Cube, Chris Chan, and Noah Antweiler, this topic seems rather obscure. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, someone just suggested this video topic to me and I got chatting with them. Um, and I didn't mention this earlier. Um, they managed to help me uh, find some more limited avenues of information that I wouldn't otherwise have had. Um, and that's one of the benefits of taking video suggestions is often people are very, very willing to help and goodness gracious do I appreciate that. And I know a lot of people have presented video suggestions and I don't respond, but, um, but do know that I am reading them and they are quite useful and I appreciate them quite a bit. Jerry Hinn asks, could you provide a little more on the ethics review that Kathleen mentioned? She had reported that there were two ethicists that critiqued the plans, but their voices didn't come up again. Did they ever trash Per once it was clear it was going ahead with none of their concerns addressed? The ethicists that you're talking about are um, people that Diane hired uh, to inspect her plans, and when they didn't yes ma'am her, she fired them. I know one of uh, the general manager before Kathleen um, did comment on the Facebook page to corroborate what Kathleen was saying. Um, but as for the ethicists, I'm not entirely certain. I don't think so. Kai Kennedy asks, did the owner ever have supporters? Does she still have supporters? More importantly, are the cats okay? 
Um, absolutely. There were so many supporters of Per Cat Cafe in, in the Brighton area and just Boston in general. Um, they were very excited to have Per Cat Cafe coming in. Like, local news stations were uh, commenting on it a lot, and they were like, hey guys, like, Boston's about to get its first per its first cat cafe, and it's a big exciting thing because it's a, it's a novelty in America. Um, but then, as people on social media began to look into it a little bit more, they used the Per Cat Cafe's Facebook page as a forum to air their concerns. And as this happened more and more, and more and more people got concerned, these, like, people who were excited about it, the fans and supporters, started to turn to detractors and people that were trying to hold Diane accountable. And there were certainly some people that were just there for the laughs. But um, a lot of people were earnestly concerned about the cats. They were people who supported the Per Cat Cafe and wanted it to succeed because they believed in the mission. And they thought maybe if they could just help Diane, help guide Diane into what um, it needed to be to succeed, um, they could have this cat cafe. But the longer things went on, the more supporters left her. Um, you'll remember that one of the people that was there to help, uh, a few of the people that were there to help with the um, with Facebook and the social media page, um, they were just a volunteer. And he ended up leaving. Like, both of them ended up leaving um, as Diane became too insufferable. By the end, I think, and by the time the cafe opened, nobody was really supporting it. Um, as for the cats, it's all over the place. Um, anytime a cat was loaned um, to the Per Cat Cafe, it, it either got adopted out or um, I, I think a few cats did get adopted out, but uh, whenever the deal was broken, um, the uh, the shelter would take their cats back, and as I mentioned earlier, a lot of um, all the cats that were at the Per Cat Cafe by the end were uh, apparently adopted by Diane. At least that's what I believe to be the case, and um, they're with Diane. So a lot of the cats are okay. Some of them they're in Diane's care, and I can't say. Hendrik Stuve asks, "What was the lasting impression you gathered about the proprietor of Cat Cafe?" Watching your video, I was torn between antipathy because of how she treated her employees and the cats in her custody on the one hand, and pity and empathy at how troubled the woman was on the other. Are you also torn on this? Um, she... As I mentioned, I don't feel like it's really my place to make large judgments. Um, and I mean, that that's sort of the way I approach a lot of people. Like, I'm not going to say in general that one person is this certain way. Um, Rather, I try to approach people uh, in the sense of what are they likely to do? And I think that empathy is a rule, like a as a rule is a good way to approach people. Understand that people are you no know, humans, they have their struggles um, and each one has their own uh, personal ones that you likely will never completely be able to relate to because it is unique to that person. Um, but that does not mean that you have to choose to spend your time with that person or work with that person. And as for Diane, she is someone that I personally, if I knew her, uh, would avoid like the plague. Adam Kearns asks, What do you see as the most egregious act the owner committed? Um, not the basement. I, I want to start this off by saying I don't actually think the basement was that bad. Um, there were a lot of concerns over it, and yeah, there was a huge lack of enrichment, but uh, like, apparently, even without the heater, apparently, like, when it was really cold out, it was still reasonably temperate inside of, um, inside of the basement. Apparently, it was fairly well insulated, because while it was getting cold outside, the basement apparently was fine. You know, not warm and toasty or anything, but it was, you know, livable. Um, and the cats would have been just fine. Most egregious to me was the way that she handled Kathleen. Um, not only was it unprofessional, it was inflammatory, completely uncalled for, and just putting someone on blast like that is... It wasn't called for at all. Um, Kathleen was raising significant concerns with uh, the business, and Diane chose to react in the most unprofessional and inflammatory way possible. Um, I'll, I'll say that... Of the things that incensed me, uh, that was the worst. The only reason that the answer I'm giving isn't the cat that died in Diane's care is because the situation is a little bit fuzzy and we only have one person's side of the story. Um, 
So, like, it, if, if everything that the person said is 100% true, then that by far would take the cake. Um, but, like I said, it's a little bit fuzzy, so I'm not comfortable saying definitively that that was the worst. Whole Horse asks, Do you believe that Per Cat Cafe was doomed from the very start with missing their funding goal, or do you think they had a chance to recover and Diane blew it? Um, per Cat Cafe had been worked on for like at least like a year and a half, I think, by the time they started the Kickstarter. The reason they started the Kickstarter was because Diane had burned through all of her money, and I still don't understand how. I don't know where all of that money went, because apparently... Like, the people who are giving figures were always saying hundreds of thousands of dollars. Where'd the money go? So I would say that it was doomed from the start, but before you're even saying it, like Diane obviously had no inkling of what she was doing. Peter Melling asks, do you think Diane's addiction was what fully derailed the Per Cat Cafe? I think that Diane's alcoholism was a second order problem in the sense that Diane doesn't know how to manage her life. And um, the alcoholism is just one facet of that larger problem. Um, and if she doesn't know how to manage her own life, you're damn right she doesn't know how to manage a business. Um, that, But that's just my perspective and what I think might be the case. Um, I, I think that even if she wasn't an alcoholic, her inherent problems, uh, her inherent character traits would have um, made the cafe crash and burn anyway. Alcohol just exacerbated it. Adam D. Goff asks, Many of these questions seem to explore the subject of a person's ability to conceive of an idea versus their ability to apply it. My question relates more to you specifically than to the video, but it is brought about by thinking on this subject. What does it take, or does it take a type of person, to bridge an idea from, from conception to application? And how did this process go down, <laughs> how this process go down in the Down the Rabbit Hole origin story? This is a really broad question, uh, but I'm going to do my best to make it as specific as possible to Down the Rabbit Hole. Um, it, for me, it took a lot of discipline to make rap make down the rabbit hole a thing. Um, the first episode was uh, I mentioned this before, I think. Um, it was something made out of necessity because I was applying. I was asked to apply for a PR position at a game company, and they wanted an, an example of my video editing ability and my, my ability to just produce videos. But I hadn't made a video in years, though I knew I had the ability. And so um, the, the digital homicide down the rabbit hole was thrown together in three days. And making that took a lot of discipline in the sense that rather than trying, rather than thinking about an end goal, I asked myself, what skills do I have? And how can I put them together to create something that someone might enjoy? And um, the conclusion I came to was Down the Rabbit Hole. Um, terrible name, by the way. I'm really unhappy with the name Down the Rabbit Hole, but it's too late now. Uh, we're, we're going in on it hard. For me, it's it very much was just recognizing what can I do and, and uh, what can I make out of the tools that I have at this moment. And I think that's very true for anyone that's um, trying to make a project and make something good and make something that potentially could be successful, is recognizing what your abilities are. And I think in the case of Diane, she didn't recognize what her skill set was and she just said, I want to make a cat cafe, even though she had no conception and no skill um, to make that a reality. Um, and so, like, I, I know that I've just sort of scratched the surface of your question, um, but hopefully it was useful. And that's it. Thank you very, very much to those patrons who ask these questions. I'm always, I, I'm always really happy to see the kinds of questions that I get. They're often very thoughtful and well thought through. Even, even the ones that seem that that are shorter seem more offhand. They're always very interesting to explore. So thank you again, everyone, and I will see you all again very soon.